as I'm making this tape here today to send out to you in this briefing, there have been uh, comments rising that I've received even just this morning concerning terrorist activity on the rise right here in the United States of America. You've heard that from the FBI. And I want you to understand that these are all signs of the imminent return of Jesus Christ, the violence in the land, but specifically anti-Semitism, the attacks against God's chosen people, the state of Israel, the nation of Israel, and the Jewish people. This rise of anti-Semitism is a sign that the tribulation period is on the horizon. And with this growing uh, anti-Semitism globally that's going on, uh, it is unbelievable the numbers and the rise that has taken place and what has, what has literally just come out of hiding, so to speak, uh, the anti-Semitic activity and protests that have been going on. In the United States, there has been, listen, 400% increase in anti-Semitic incidences just since October 7th of 2023, just a little over a month. This time last year in 2022, anti-Semitic incidences were up 36%. That was the highest on record. And in 2023, the number rose again, going dramatically higher at the wake, uh, in the wake of the Hamas attack and the Israeli response. The rise of anti-Semitism is a warning sign, ladies and gentlemen, that something is on the horizon, something's coming. That warning sign is that in the not too distant future, uh, that the tribulation period will be upon us. Certainly we know before that it's the rapture of the church and the exposure of the antichrist system that we're seeing happening in our world right now. In America, listen to this, three out of 10 of those that are 18 to 24 years old believe the United States should support Hamas in this conflict rather than Israel. 26% believe that the solution to the problem is for Israel to be destroyed and the land to be given to Hamas and the Palestinians. So you're seeing right now a growing wave of anti-Semitism, not just around the world, but in the United States of America, as always has been a close and the closest ally to the nation of Israel. You're seeing it in Turkey right now. And ladies and gentlemen, Turkey is one of those named countries in Ezekiel 38 that would be a part of that coalition that would come against Israel in the last days. Up until October the 7th, there was communication and contact and there was a negotiations and all kinds of conversation and a calming that was happening between Turkey and Israel. Since then, Israel has pulled its ambassadors out of Turkey and their embassy there, their locations there, and Turkey has backed away and now is calling for the destruction of Israel. In Paris and in London, signs that are going up saying, gas the Jews and Hitler should have finished the job. These are signs and these are literally statements that are being made that are mimicking the time of the 1930s and the 1940s when we entered into World War II and Hitler at the forefront to exterminate the Jews as the final solution. I want you to know that uh, since the beginning of time, Satan has tried to wipe out the Jewish people from the Romans and others that when Jesus uh, came onto the scene and died on the cross and the resurrection took place, uh, you can know reading the scripture that there has been the constant tracking and the a uh, purposeful killing of Jews uh, and Jewish people. And Jesus came to be able to give uh, the life and the abundant life, not just to Jewish people, but to all the Gentiles who would believe. But Satan has been trying to wipe out the Jewish people uh, so that God, uh, in his attempt, could not fulfill the purpose and the program that he has with the Jewish people. But Revelation 12 and 13 tells us very clearly that the ultimate um, uh, anti-Semite, the Antichrist, will rise to power and persecute the Jewish people in the end times during the tribulation period. He will act like a friend to the nation of Israel to start with, but in three and a half years he will break the covenant, as the Bible says in the book of Daniel, and he will be exposed as the greatest hater and anti-Semite that has ever been. Here's what Zechariah says as we close this briefing today. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. 
when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut to pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Are we watching that even in the United States? Even our president calling for a pause at this moment, uh, a ceasefire in effect so that Hamas can regroup? My friends, a terrorist is a terrorist. And there's only one way to deal with that kind of a terrorist. Satan has been a terrorist since the beginning. And there's only one way to defeat uh, that kind of terrorist activity, especially as you're watching the atrocities that are mimicking that and exceeding that of the Holocaust on the Jewish people. And their statement is never again. I want you to hear this as we close today. Many of you may have heard of the, of the Tin Boom family Corey Ten Boom during the time of World War II was a family that would uh, help Jewish people and hide Jewish people so that they could be safe uh, from death and captivity. Here's the story. The previous generation before Corey Ten Boom came in, the Ten Boom family started a weekly prayer meeting for the Jewish people in 1844. After uh, a moving, this article says, a moving worship service in a Dutch Reformed church, a man named William Ten Boom felt the need to pray for the Jewish people. People would stop by and they would have a weekly prayer meeting where they would pray Psalm 122 and 6 for the peace of Jerusalem. Those meetings took place every week for a hundred years until February 28, 1944 when the Ten Boom family were gathered together for their weekly prayer meeting for the Jewish people when the Nazi soldiers came in the house and took them away for helping local Jews hide themselves in a secret room. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this to you. In the days that are ahead, you're going to mark your place in history as to how you supported the Jewish people. And the question will be asked by your great-grandchildren, where were, my, where were my grandparents, my great-grandparents even, when the Jews were being hauled off? Where were they? That's the question we ask of those in World War II as we deflected for the longest period of time until Japan uh, came to Pearl Harbor and suddenly America now was in the war. But we knew plenty of it, and we knew it and did not involve ourselves. Now is not the time for us to be silent. This is not time for you to be closed mouth about it. This is a time to speak up. I will not be silent for the sake of Zion, the scripture says. So right now is the time to stand, my friend. Stand and pray earnestly for the peace of Jerusalem, for the leaders of America and the leaders of Israel in these very critical days leading to the return of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us for this Prophecy Files briefing. And until the next time, Remember, Jesus Christ is coming soon.